NMUNDC conference. To organize this annual, annual conference, as well as our events in New York, NMUN is grateful for the assistance of the volunteer staff, our headquarters team in Minnesota, and its board of directors, chaired by Professor Chrissy Easton. In just a moment, we will formally begin the ceremony with a video message from the UN Secretary General. Before that, however, I would like to offer two additional thank yous and make one request. First, thank you for taking part in our first ever virtual NMUN conference. Since our last conference, well, you're aware, the global COVID-19 pandemic and here in my home country, the United States, the beginnings of an overdue conversation about race, as well as a consequential election on the national and local level. There's a lot going on. Your commitment to the ideals of the United Nations, achieving the global goals, and this type of education for global citizenship is admirable at any time, but particularly in the face of numerous challenges at home and on campus. Thank you for your energy and ideas you will share in committee over the next several days. And to those joining from Europe and Asia, an extra acknowledgement of your efforts to be present despite the time difference with Washington, DC. Second, thank you for your patience. The format for the conference is new to all of us. The platform selected, Gatherly, was the one we found best replicated the informal sessions that are a hallmark of Model UN. Still, I have no doubt that over the next few days, many of us will forget at some point to either mute or unmute or have our connection drop somehow. We've already restarted this opening ceremony. Perhaps it's simply another opportunity to practice our diplomatic skills. And finally, a request for civility. In participating in NMUN, we ask you to take on the roles of diplomats of your assigned country. We do not simulate the general debate where heads of state come to General Assembly Hall in New York each September and occasionally offer fiery rhetoric for a domestic audience. We instead ask you to represent the professional civil servants who work throughout the UN system to represent their home country, the, the people who know the names of the kids and grandkids of their colleagues, because even if there are occasional policy differences, there's an expectation of diplomacy. In the next couple of days, enjoy the discussions with your peers without political slogans or national symbols and grounded in respect and civility. As organizers, we look forward to hearing your ideas for multilateral solutions to a myriad of issues before the eight committees that we simulate. And now, as we begin the opening ceremony, it is my pleasure to welcome you to the 2020 NMUNDC conference and to introduce via video the United Nations Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, for his greetings. Our world faces the biggest test since the Second World War. In these trying times, I welcome the holding of your model UN activity. Your commitment to international cooperation is essential for tackling the COVID-19 pandemic. We can only defeat the coronavirus if we do so globally. We must come together and support the most vulnerable. United Nations is undertaking a wide-ranging response calling for a global ceasefire and working to control the pandemic, save lives, mitigate the social economic damage, fight stigma and recover better. I draw great hope from seeing your generation mobilized to address the challenges of our time and to build a healthier, more equitable and sustainable future for all. I wish you a successful Model UN. All, all right, or 
as I was talking about technical difficulties. There we go. Thank you, Secretary General Guterres. And again, thank you all for your enthusiasm and preparation that will make this simulation a success and provide inspiration for the work of the UN over the next 75 years. It's now my privilege to introduce our keynote speaker. Hillel Lowe is the Special Assistant to Undersecretary General Fabrizio Hochschild, Special Advisor to the Secretary General on the UN 75th anniversary. Mr. Lowe previously worked at the UN Department of Political and Peacekeeping Affairs in New York. His prior experience within the UN system include the World Food Program headquarters in Rome, UN Development Program China, UN Department of Political Affairs New York, the UN Office for Project Services Tokyo, and the UN High Commissioner for Refugees in Tokyo. He holds master's degrees from Sciences Po Paris, the London School of Economics, and Peking University. It is my privilege to give the floor, so to speak, to our keynote speaker, Hillel Lowe. Um, Mr. Aiton, uh, Mr. Sweeney, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Thank you uh, so much for this uh, invitation to join the uh, opening ceremony of the National Model UN. It's a great uh, pleasure and honor to, to participate uh, on behalf of the uh, Under Secretary General, Mr. Fabrizio Orchal. Um, ladies and gentlemen, the uh, National Model UN is the, the oldest MUN organization in the world, preceding even the UN itself, uh, having been founded in 1927, uh, back then during the Model League of Nations. Uh, it is an extremely uh, valuable activity for you to engage in, one by which you can learn about pressing global issues and what is needed to uh, resolve them. Through Model UN, you will also develop important skills like fine-tuning an argument for debate, giving and taking in negotiation, and speaking in public with uh, confidence. And it's a great honor for the UN 75 initiative to be associated with the uh, National Model UN and continue to encourage uh, all of you and all of us to, to fine tune these skills and build uh, a better world for us all to, um, for tomorrow. Um, as you all know, we just concluded the uh, high level week of the 75th session of the UN General Assembly last month. On 21st of September, heads of state and government from all around the world took part virtually in the commemoration for the 75th anniversary of the United Nations, a landmark anniversary at a time of great upheaval. By all accounts, our world stands at a pivot point. COVID-19 continues to exact a great toll on our health system and our economies. The impact of climate change is causing greater damage to our planet. Social inequalities, geopolitical tensions, and the impact of digital technologies are testing the capacities of our institutions. And yet, 75 years after the creation of the UN, international cooperation is more vital than ever. At the GA, at the GA UN 75 summit, the overwhelming majority of states refer to the centrality of the United Nations in addressing these global challenges. And yet what we see is that with, despite this rhetoric of support, uh, we also, and to quote the UN Secretary General, Mr. Guterres, we, we have a surplus of multilateral challenges and a deficit of multilateral solutions in spite of all these global challenges that are affecting us all as we take part virtually today in this uh, opening ceremony, we see a world where there is a retreat from multilateralism, the resurgence, resurgence of superpower friction and rivalry, the rise of isolationism, an ad hoc shifting of alliance of like madding states and generally a fatigue to, use, uh, to, to resort to using um, the multilateral uh, methodology to solve these issues. This crisis needs to be acknowledged, and it's also due to a fact that maybe multilateralism has not always delivered as, uh, on its promises or is not delivering on, uh, upon the expectation that is placed upon it. We see disenchantment with the Security Council at the high, and also a broader disappointment with member states being unable to move forward with the urgency required to counter climate change or to address uh, conflict risks. There is a consensus among member states that we need to rethink the way our global institutions work and infuse them with a new energy to overcome the dangerous paradox between the rise of global challenges and the decline of global cooperation. It is against that background that the Secretary General last year 
uh, decided to initiate this, this new project, the UN 75 initiative, which formally started at the beginning of the year. It was the Secretary General's intention to undertake what he called a global listening tour and thereby seek fresh guidance, new inspirations from we the people to help us overcome the impasse in which we now find ourselves. To that end, we organized this year a series of global conversation on the theme, the future we want, the UN we need. We reached out to people all across and listened to them by asking them four questions. One, what are your priorities for post-COVID recovery? Two, what are your priorities for the world 25 years from now? What do you see as the biggest threats to the realization of that vision? And four, what are your expectations of international cooperation and the UN in particular to solve it? And uh, we've reached out far and wide to, to really secure this global listening tour. And in particular, we listen to youth. We partner with uh, uh, Model UN, several different Model UNs and UN associations around the world, youth group, universities, academia, civil society, and so forth. And after a year of this undertaking, we've received the feedback from uh, uh, more than 3,000 dialogues, in-person dialogues when it was permitting, before COVID hit and in areas where it was uh, possible, but also mostly online from uh, 80 countries. And as a result of this uh, process, we gathered no less than uh, 1.2 million responses from every uh, member state, all 193 member states, through a mini surveys that mentioned those questions I referred to. We've worked also with uh, uh, independent survey companies who organized and carried out independent and scientific, scientifically sampled surveys in 50 different countries around those same questions. As a result, I'd like to share with you some of the findings which were uh, presented in the report that was shown at the GA last month. What are the findings from this global listening tour for the UN 75 anniversary? First, and uh, it's a very important point, striking against the backdrop that we have here in the United States of increased polarization, friction, or deadlock that we see here in New York. The opposite is true in the rest of the world and also in the United States in terms of what the people want and aspire to. We see that across all region, ages, and social groups, respondents to these questions are remarkably united in their priorities for the future. They are united around their fears and the expectation of international cooperation. Obviously, the first finding was that uh, amid this current COVID-19 crisis, the immediate priority for most respondents are improved access to basic services. Uh, the world needs, at the global level, affordable healthcare, safe water, sanitation, and education. Followed by this, and this is the second main demand for post-COVID-19 recovery, is the call for greater international solidarity. There's a, there's a desire for increased support to those who are hardest hit by the pandemic, those who are left behind, and this also includes the demand to better tackle social inequalities. COVID-19 has indeed drawn the public attention to uh, the most vulnerable and the deep inequalities that characterize our, our world. Looking further to the future, the overwhelming concern relates to the climate crisis and the destruction of our national environment. And it's very striking that even while fears about public health dominate the discussion, the number one concern throughout the pandemic and uh, looking to the future remains the need to protect the environment better and address climate change. Other priorities uh, looking forward included uh, greater respect for human rights, better settling of ongoing conflicts, tackling poverty and reducing uh, corruption. With regards to the perception of international cooperation and the UN, over 87% of respondents believe global cooperation is vital to deal with today's challenges. And striking is the finding that the pandemic has made people think that international cooperation is even more urgent. But the respondents are not looking for more of the same. And those views are not are sometimes critical of the current form of international cooperation and critical of the UN. The respondents see the UN as sometimes too detached from local realities, detached from the people. And they want to see a UN that better reflects the stakeholders of the 21st century, not our traditional partners like member states, but a UN that innovates more, that is not only more diverse, but also more transparent, more accountable, and more effective. They want a UN that is less paralyzed by differences and one that is more inclusive. One where the Security Council functions and can fully fulfill its role in, uh, in solving international conflicts. Ladies and gentlemen, 
On 21st September, all states uh, negotiated and adopted a very forward-looking declaration, political declaration on the occasion of UN 75 with a pledge to tackle these issues, including those raised by the respondents to our global listening tour and our survey. The declaration also calls for the Secretary General to come back with concrete proposal on how to upgrade the UN system to make it more effective, to deliver better on these global aspirations and for the UN to become more inclusive. The work of gathering ideas has begun, but change and improvement will depend on all of us. We are all the United Nations. And as the United Nations Charter say, we the people, we all have a stake in it. And we all need to be that change that we seek. And in closing, I would like to really uh, thank you again and call upon all of you as a uh, model UN participant to, to reflect on these issues, on these global issues in the way you carry out the, the model UN um, processes, but also in your individual lives as citizens, as students, and as uh, active uh, stakeholders of our common world to think about how we can upgrade this system, how we can make um, the UN deliver better, and also how we at our individual level also take action that serve that common goals and these common aspirations for better COVID-19 recovery, for uh, building back better and tackling social inequalities, climate change and peace and security. Thank you again for this opportunity. It's a great honor to represent the UN 75 office here. And I'd like to convey from uh, Mr. Rochelle his warmest regards and best wishes to you all. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Halal, for your remarks. Thank you for your work and thank you for your office's interest in having the voices of youth be part of the UN 75 celebration and also making plans for the next 75 years and beyond. We look forward to having you back participating in future conferences when we can interact in person once again with delegates and with speakers. At this time, it's my pleasure to introduce not a video of the real Secretary General, but instead to have on this call our NMUN Secretary General for the 2020 DC Conference. Please join me from wherever you're listening in welcoming our Secretary General, Daniel Sweeney. Thank you, Michael. I'd like to take a moment to recognize the amazing volunteer staff who have worked tirelessly since January to bring together this conference for all of you. In particular, I'd like to recognize our senior staff uh, uh, under Secretary Generals, Courtney Indart, Emma Ogg, and Adam Wolf. I'm truly excited for you to meet each and every one of our volunteer staff over this weekend. Please join me in thanking them for their hard work. The power of fundamental documents such as the Sustainable Development Goals and Universal Declaration of Human Rights are not in the words, but rather their acceptance by all 193 member states. Since the inception of the UN, it has been people coming together with very different values and goals to create solutions for global challenges. Building this type of large consensus is the way to build long lasting positive change. This can be frustrating at times, but that is the hard work of diplomacy necessary to create a better world. Today, our challenges are increasingly complex and our world is increasingly polarized, making the importance of the UN greater than ever. As Secretary General Gutierrez said, these large challenges require global solutions. So why model UN? There are two key reasons I'd highlight. The first is that building consensus requires a deep understanding of viewpoints which differ from your own. Over this weekend, you'll have an opportunity to learn deeply about the positions of not only your own member state, but those of your fellow delegates. The second is that leadership requires practice. Building consensus is not just an idea, but something that must be learned. Over this weekend, you will have that exact opportunity to learn how to build consensus. So on a day not so long from now, when you are called upon to build consensus to solve a complex problem, 
you will be able to do so. You will know how to work with those who have different values, ideas from your own, and you will know how to engage with the hard work of diplomacy. So I urge all of you to engage thoughtfully and critically over the next few days, because this experience will guide you for years to come. Don't focus on any one idea, but how you can make the world the one we deserve. What you are about to embark on will be a difficult experience and often frustrating, but that is the, is the hard work of diplomacy that is absolutely necessary to achieving the mission of the United Nations. So with that, it is my privilege to declare this National Model United Nations DC 2020 conference open. I think the applause track was an accurate simulation of what we would have had were, were we able to all meet in person. Before we invite you to go to the Gatherly platform, um, a few announcements. Some of you have already been trying it out. The platform is open. A reminder that you enter in the ballroom and then need to navigate by clicking on the elevators or I guess using the arrows and that will allow you to go into the individual committee rooms or if you have questions to information services, um, just as if we were in person, you can't all go through a physical doorway um, at the same time. Uh, we urge people to be patient that not everyone can enter at once. And in fact, one of the reasons that we were using YouTube and Facebook for the opening ceremony is that any individual room, the technology does not allow for more than 200, 250 people. So please, as the ceremony concludes and you begin to make your way to Gatherly, um, show a little bit of patience, um, both during the sessions and also in getting to the rooms as if you were having to physically wait um, for an elevator here at the hotel. Um, enjoy the conference. In case any of you missed the full video about youth engagement um, that the UN75 produced that was played as attendees were gathering for the broadcast, We'll replay that now for anyone that had missed it, um, and then make your way to com your committee rooms at your leisure. Thank you for joining us at the conference and enjoy NMUN DC 2020.